<laughs> so Neil, tell us a bit about this uh, Chrysler powered Ford. This is an old hot rod, built probably about 20 years ago, probably a bit longer. What it is, it's Ryder Hatfield from Hatfield Engineering or Castlemaine Hot Rod Shop, Castlemaine Rod Shop. And he actually built the car up along with a lot of his other cars that he built up over the years. Now Rod Hatfield goes back right back to 73 when the first Hot Rod Nationals were going, when he had a little Ford Anglia. And he's built up Mark II Zephyrs, he's built up 55 Chevys, it looks like aeroplanes, painted up like aeroplanes. He's done twin blown T, -dot, T model coupes. He's a, an absolute wizardry of building cars. What he's done, he's sold this car to Dominic over here in WA and he sold a couple of other cars. He's been to the States as well to promote what he's been doing in building cars. He did sell a couple of cars while he's over there, but the bug is still bitten him and he's brought back three cars to continue building back in Castlemaine, in Victoria. But this car, Dominic's like this, this is actually registered as a historical type of car because of the historical significance going with this car being built so many years ago. That's why it's done very limited miles. It's got what they call a, a limited registration, but because we don't really run limited registration in WA, Dominic really only uses it for outings on road events, which means pretty much a restricted, restricted use anyway. But because it's got the suicide type front end in it, it's got a longer wheelbase than normal on a 34 coupe. But it's got a 32 grille on the front of it. All right, Neil, thanks for joining us. Not a problem, anytime.
Craig Cooper, thanks for being with us. Tell us a bit about your 58. Well, this is a uh, 1958 Chevrolet Bel Air Sports Sedan. It's um, not uh, what you'd call a, a common car in the sense of um, you know, what's out there. I've always uh, liked this particular model because it's, it's being a four-door pillarless. It's got the beauty of a coupe with the windows down, but the convenience of a four-door. So yeah, I've, I've always had a soft spot for this particular model year and everything. So when one came up, I yeah, jumped at it. So if you originally knew, I wouldn't have thought so. No, well actually this one here was um, sold in um, in Europe, in actually um, Stockholm. It's a it, uh, General Motors International Chevrolet, and uh, yeah, it was at some stage, we were not particular sure of exactly what year it came to Australia. Um, last time it was registered was in the ACT in about uh, the late 70s. That's the last known registration that I managed to track down. And you've done a complete rebuild? Yeah, I, I bought the car in probably about 99, 2000, somewhere around there. It was, um, I bought it from a gentleman that uh, started a rebuild um, and got down to basically a bare uh, front uh, chassis and uh, body and then lost interest. And so for the last four or five or six or seven or eight years, you've been well and truly involved in it? Yes, yeah, yeah. The years depend on yeah, who you speak to, but because um, um, part of what's in this car is out of my first 58 Chevy, which is an old hearse, which um, I started a rebuild on, but uh, never quite got to the end, so um, yeah. And this is a usable sort of car? Yeah, it's, um, that was the whole intention. It was, it was always a case of we wanted to build a car that was a, uh, a, a good car to drive around, a, a nice car that you know, turns heads now and then, uh, but a good cruiser. But we've actually um, had it down at Quinana at the drag strip a couple of times now and um, managed to get a 14-1 out of it, which um, we're looking at because it's tantalisingly close to a 13. So a little bit of tuning and I think we might just um, Get a 13, Thanks. should be good. Thanks for sharing with us. Not a problem, thank you.
Thanks, Chris Pitmate, for joining us. Tell us about your beautiful car. Yeah, the uh, the project started uh, back in 2000, some six years ago. Uh, we've uh, got a chassis built by West Coast Vintage Ford here in Perth. And um, yeah, the guys there yeah, uh, built the chassis and ordered at the same time ordered the body from Juice Customs over in Victoria, uh, which was delivered after the, the chassis was, was built. Um, the engine was built by the Outside Engine Centre. The guys down there do a fantastic job. and. Um, the, the inlet system is a complete custom made EFI setup, and that was uh, all done by Steve Renshaw. So, um, yeah, he's responsible for getting the engine running nicely. Um, the polish work on it was done by uh, Mick Hocking from Wild Metal Polishing, and uh, yeah, did a fantastic job. It's a fair bit of work in that engine to do, and it's sort of, yeah, credit to him the, the way it's come out. And it's a 50s Chrysler engine you've used? 1957 uh, Chrysler Hemi 392 cubic inch, which uh, originally came out of a uh, Chrysler Imperial. Um, yeah, other work we've done for the engine, uh, apart from, like I mentioned before, the mild camshaft, is just this complete smoothing off of the block. Uh, many hours were spent in the uh, in the shed grinding back all the casting marks off the block before Sam Hawkins applied the, the mirror finish um, galaxy grey paint on it. Thanks for sharing your passion, Chris. Thank you. Andrea Hahn, I believe you're a keen Hot Rod Junior, tell us about it. Yes, and I like driving around my dad all the time, like, I, my friends always get jealous of me because I've got a better, better car than them because I think it mine's more better and like, they, they don't know how to drive it besides me. <laughs>
And that's the little mini cars we saw yes. inside? Yes. And what about the Christmas pageant? I like driving the Christmas pageant for the Christmas spirit and I see my friends in the in the choir that cheer me on. They, they always, yeah, yeah. And when the little cars grow up, they'll end up a full-size big car? Yes, like this one. Well, thanks for joining us.